Welcome back. So now that we have understood personality is the traits, characteristics, the way you behave, the way you acquire things, and the skill sets that you have, either you know given by nature, that is you are born with, or nurtured, when the environment builds certain characteristics and traits. And I've been talking a lot about traits, traits, and traits. Let's see what are these traits that we either acquire or we inherit from our parents. Now, what are these traits? Traits are defined as the different characteristics that make up an individual's personality. So, the characteristics that have all this while been talking about are the traits. So, different traits make your personality different characteristics that make up an individual's personality. So, characteristics and traits kind of go hand in hand. It's similar. Both these are same things. Apart from that, what is trait? What does trait include? Your thoughts. And this cognition, uh, we call it the technical term for thoughts is the, cogn the cognitive ability of your mind that is to think. Thoughts. The way we feel, our feelings, okay? At times we feel very cheerful, at times we feel very sad, at times we feel very moody, at times we feel very excited, at times we feel very enthusiastic. So all these feelings and behaviors also come under traits. Our feelings, behaviors and the thoughts. And then, um, then you say that people are introvert, extrovert, friendly, honest, kind, aggressive. So, you must have heard of the, all these words to, told to you, right? You do not talk much. You are an introvert. Oh my God, look at him. He talks so much or she talks so much. He or she is an extrovert, means who talks a lot. So, we define introvert and extrovert as introvert who somebody who uh, is someone who does not talk much and extrovert is someone who talks a lot. And then you will see people say, look at her. She is so friendly. She knows how to talk. She makes friends very easily. That's a trait. Or you will see that people say, yeah, he is very honest or she is very honest. When at school or at work, you are very honest. And then kind, these are the traits that we talk, characteristics. Or aggressive, as I told in the previous lesson, that there are some personality traits that people have that they are very aggressive, they are very assertive. Or then there are people who are very passive, who do not want to get into any kind of argument and they feel that it's safe to be. Uh, you know, letting ourselves evade these kind of situations. So, all these words that you hear are actually the traits. Introvert, extrovert, kind, honest, the feelings that we have, the way we behave and the thoughts we have in our mind. All these combined put together is what our personality traits are. And personality trait also has been studied by so many psychologists. There are many popular psychologists. I will not go deep into those things because that's a study that you know uh, ch adult children do. I mean, people who take up psychology as a subject, that is uh, a graduation topic, uh, subject rather. But I would just like to tell you the certain characteristics or traits that psychologists have studied on and found out so that you understand what kind of characteristics you have or you possess. Okay. Now moving on. So, you, you see these words here, the big five model. So, uh, there was a study and they have come out with a with big five model. And what are these five models? First one is, so they have defined these characteristics under several categories or they have classified. So, there are five classifications they have done. What is the first classification? First classification of a personality trait that they have said is agreeableness. What does this word agreeableness mean? The word itself kind of sounds to you that somebody who agrees to think things very easily, the, the very first time you hear this word. But then let us see what are the characteristics that people have when they have agreeableness as a trait. Trust, altruism, kindness, affection and other pro-social behaviors. So these kind of people depict these kind of traits, trust. Then kindness, all right, affection, pro-social means somebody who is very social, very, very social are known as agreeableness, are categorized under agreeableness. So, 
anyone who has the trait of being an agreeable uh, shows an agreeableness trait has is is trustworthy is social is kind thinks about people something like that okay so that is the first category conscientiousness this is, is a very big word but a very simple word high levels of thoughtfulness conscience you heard of this word called conscience something that is that comes from within okay again your mental uh, faculties high levels of thoughtfulness what you think it's all as i told you in the mind high levels of thoughtfulness good impulse control so you can control yourself okay so that is the kind of and it's all here so your cognition your thoughts help you control yourself or have you have a control on a situation and goal directed behavior so if you have if you de depict conscientiousness as a as a trait then you are someone who has a high level of thoughtfulness you are very cognitive in nature you think through things or situations or people and you can you have a control and you have a direction okay you set your goals and you move towards them next is extroversion so i have told you extrovert means people who do not make uh, who do not open up who are on to themselves who love their own company than you know a lot of i'm so sorry extroversion is people who are just the opposite of introvert people who are very gregarious who love company who who open up all right so sociable talkative assertive excitability all these traits are there so you are always excited enthusiastic you very social you love to mix with people you love to work in a group you are so lively that when you enter a group you make that group itself becomes very happy so the very presence uh, how many times has it happened that when someone comes some of your friends or, or some of your teachers you feel very excited they they make their entire uh, environment very lively okay so they are, they have this uh, trait of extroversion they can they are very social they can mix up with people they can relate to people and understand them well that is how that resonates in the way they behave neuroticism neuroticism actually sadness moodiness emotional instability worries about many different things now this is another model that they have come up with neuroticism this again neuro is your neurons and there are children who often feel very emotional or are sad okay or worry like i used to worry for no reason about different things i mean nothing will happen but you you will keep on worrying you are always engrossed with some waste or negative thoughts and they have defined it under neuroticism the, the word neuroticism means when you feel sad when you are worried when you when you cannot have control on your negative thoughts or your your emotional stability is not there you're not emotionally very very stable then these kind of people are categorized under a model called and it's, it's known as neuro criticism then openness okay creative open to trying new things you always are jumping from one thing to the other you always try you always want excitement in your life you want to come up with new things you want to try new things happy to think about abstract concepts and just take some time and look at these words and then see when you see your parents or you know your cousins or maybe your nephews and uh, sorry your uh, uncles and aunties then you see that okay yeah my uncle or my aunt is very creative that is why he has gone into advertising okay my aunt is she is into arts and crafts she is very creative she she comes up with these origami arts okay or she is a very good painter and she has her own creative school so the profession that they choose depends on the kind of traits they have the kind of characteristics they have and they too must have acquired it or inherited it so all of these things extroversion neuroticism openness and then we saw the previous two traits that uh, models that we saw are conscious our agreeableness all this define who we are okay now this five big five model is a study i just wanted you to understand that how do we kind of categorize these traits there are other personality traits that i will talk about personality traits such as shy now what does this model say personality traits such as being shy and I, and i asked you a question in previous lessons that 
if your mother or any of your parents is shy are you shy too or are you not okay shy outgoing somebody who is always excited and very extrovert friendly sociable are aspects of extroversion okay um this actually will not be here shy can have two definitions but here aspects of extroversion this is a wrong word here i'm so sorry so outgoing friendly sociable aspects are the aspects of extroversion but traits such as kind thoughtfulness organized if you are a very organized person and ambitious would be part of the conscientiousness spectrum okay so they have actually again categorized it into different categories compared to your parents how frequently do you tend to worry and to experience negative emotions has it ever happened that as i told you that when my father used to get worried and he used to feel negative emotions i also had inherited that does that happen with you also how our personality developed does that happen to you do you also think that yeah my my parents are very emotional there is an emotional outburst that happens with them happens with me too so compared to your parents how frequently do you tend to worry and experience negative emotions if not well and good if yes no problem we just trying to understand whether you have inherited these or acquired these what evidence is there for personality being at least partially determined by genetics this kind of is a repetition of a previous slide the reason why i am repeating it is because i want you all to again go back and think that acquired or inherited though it's a part of nature or nurture but then it's again a harp on is it acquired or inherited now look at the topic can personality traits change can you change your personality traits if you are an extrovert can you become an introvert all of a sudden if you are um, someone who is very social can you become a, a person who is we call them solitary so there there are two words solitary and gregarious so a gregarious can a gregarious person become um, solitary or solitary become gregarious can a, can an imaginative person become factual or a factual person become imaginative can a very emotional person become rational and a rational person all of a sudden becomes emotional so can we change personality traits can a very extroverted person for example might become somewhat more reserved over time does that happen now take some time and think of people who who you know or who you have heard about who were very friendly or very uh, very um, outgoing very extrovert and all of a sudden when you meet them next you see that they have they have changed altogether they have become very introvert they do not feel that excited anymore they are sad about certain things does this happen just take a moment and think not only maybe people you know but people you hear of people who are for that matter celebrities too at time you you will see that they are at the peak of their career and then after few years you come to know that there has been a sad ending to them does it happen it does happen and if it happens why does it happen which means that from a very gregarious person if somebody uh, becomes very uh, solitary and then kind of there is an end a very sad end which means the personality trait has changed for bad but you are an introvert person and then you get and i, I used to give this feedback to the mba uh, students who i used to teach because we used to train them on personality development on confidence building and then we used to uh, make them ready for interviews because the the companies will come and recruit them and they will have to give their best shot i used to tell them that though even though you you are born by nature an introvert person who doesn't want to talk and who doesn't mix with people just try to at least acquire some trait of an extrovert person you will be able to and i see them through practice and practice and practice they try to mix up with people they try to become a bit gregarious okay so can might somewhat become more reserved but you cannot have a 100% alteration of your characteristics an introvert on the other hand may find themselves becoming somewhat more extroverted as they grow older so what happens and i've seen this with my dad he was always a very reserved person unlike me 
So that is one trait that I have not inherited from my dad. None of us, none of the sisters have has inherited this uh, trait of his. He is a very reserved person, not someone who is very lively. He, I will not call him um, a solitary, but he, he only loves his family's company. He doesn't believe in making so many friends, going out, partying and all that. He is, he is on his own. He will read newspapers, he will watch maybe news or he is lost in his thoughts. He is, till, till the time he retired, he was kind of a very reserved person. But now, after 15 years of his retirement, I see him, he talks a lot. He talks so much, he wants to know so much. He will sit with us when we are uh, maybe discussing on some uh, topic or we are watching some channels and then he will say, he will give his inputs and to such an extent that we wonder that is he the same man who used to be so reserved, who we had to probe and uh, talk to. So normally, and just think about your grandparents and ask your parents that was Nani, Dadi or Grandma, Grandpa, like, well, were, they, were they always like this, extrovert? Or you see that they were a bit reserved and now that they have grown old, they have kind of changed a bit. They do change, not all again, they do change. So, an introvert, and this has been especially with the elderly, when, they, when you grow old, with experience also and then because you have nothing else to do when you retire and then when you are surrounded with your uh, grandchildren and then you play with them, you become very lively and that is how you become extrovert. What is affecting their characters here, characteristics here? The environment. So they have acquired it, which means personality traits can change. So the reason why I was giving all of these examples is personality, whatever you are born with or inherited, you have inherited, you can change a bit of it. It's not impossible. You can do that. At times, again, it happens naturally or at times you have to make in efforts. When it becomes naturally, the environment actually changes you or you have to do certain things that you change your traits. That is what I was saying in both of these examples that I gave, introvert to extrovert, extrovert to introvert, the individual's core personality has not changed altogether. They are by nature like that only. But a bit of certain things change, instead changes over time, often the result of experiences, I told you, have led to subtle shifts in these central traits. It comes through experience or the environment becomes such that you, uh, you become very, you change your trait. Again, I told you I have a lot of examples to give. One of my school friends, I remember till the time we were together, uh, uh, the school that I have studied in just has... Uh, classes till 10th. I mean, we don't have plus two there. So, we had to move out of our school and then pursue plus two in different schools. I'm talking about 98 that we I appeared for my um, board exams. Till the time I had last seen him, that was in 98, he was, he was so quiet that we literally had to, we wondered that does this, and we, ha we had seen him like that since lower kg. So, we've been together since lower kg. So, you can imagine uh, from, uh, from the age of 4 to the age of 18, we were together. And all of us used to discuss that why does this guy don't, don't talk? I mean, what will he do when he grows up? Uh, at this age also, at the age of 16, he's so quiet and this is the time wherein you, you, are lo you have a lot of these ha hormonal changes and then you become, you, you think that you are the ruler of the world. Why doesn't he talk? And then we moved ahead. We, we pursued our further studies and then we got married and then we have children and family and thanks to the social media, we got together once again. You must be hearing these stories from your parents because when we were young, when we, we, we were in our college, social media didn't exist. Internet had just come in, so we didn't have the avenue of reaching out to our friends. And when once you leave your city, because we are from smaller cities and there was no I would not say zero avenue of growth, but we wanted to pursue higher studies in some other cities. So we moved out. Most of us moved out. And then you lose touch with your friends. We created this WhatsApp group in the year 2013, my school friends group. And then when we started discussing, and obviously in WhatsApp group, what you discuss, you discuss. When, when you are with your friends, you will realize when you grow up, you, you uh, start pursuing your career and then when you meet your, with your friends, all that you talk about are the good things that you did in school or some mischief that you did in school. And then we, we were talking about how mischievous, uh, especially the boys were and how they used to harass the girls and all that, so on and so forth. 
and then somebody from the group said do you know this particular guy is now one of the most talkative guys i said i cannot believe it because the person who i had last met in 98 after that i have not met him actually he was someone who literally had to be pushed teachers used to literally feed in words in his mouth that speak up speak up speak up so from 98 till 2013 what happened that he changed to such an extent so it's what 2 plus 13 15 years after 15 years when i hear about him he is a completely changed man so his environment changed the moment he moved out of school and then he saw that there is a lot of competition he's he is a pursued engineering from prestigious institute then he went into jobs and when he meets colleagues his uh, clients his uh, peers that is how he changed so but his natural tendency is that he was born with that quality he will not change the major traits of his uh, personality but from an introvert he became an extrovert he has taken up some traits of an extrovert person not all because by nature he is an he is an introvert so now he talks he talks he shares his ideas he has to do it otherwise if he stays still remains mum the way he was when he was in school then then though he is gone because he'll not be able to pursue his professional life he has to give presentations he has to meet clients he has to talk to his subordinates he has to talk to his boss he has to share ideas come up with new uh, inventions how will he do that if he is always quiet and doesn't talk but then the nature the, the basic character so uh, i didn't meet him but a few friends had a get together and he he most of these friends of mine live in bangalore they had a get together and they said that this guy has changed but the the natural tendency of him being that introvert is still there but you know he shares ideas he talks unlike what he used to do earlier so you can change your personality trait even if that trait has been inherited you can change it either by doing lot of things or the environment makes you change yourself okay i remember here about a movie that i had watched um, a hindi movie i don't remember the name though this protagonist in this movie she was by nature a very shy girl very very shy and very very introvert she used to be so scared to even see a small cockroach that shy and um, meek and docile she was and very tender okay and then something happened during course of time she met a she met a boy and then this boy kind of uh, overpowered her and she started changing and changing and then she realized that this boy is not the right match for her and she ended up in a jail because this boy was actually had some wrong intentions she ended up in a jail but then when she was in the jail also she was so because she's scared of insects whenever she used to see some and there was a lot of rats in that prison the moment she would see those rats she would get shivers and she, she will uh, you know push herself behind and behind and behind but how long can you push there was a there's it's a small room she kept on pushing and pushing and pushing and then she was very scared and she screamed but nobody came for help okay and then after a few days there was a shot that was shown that she is surrounded with rats and literally she threw something and the rat died so now she knew that if i still remain the same girl these rats will start biting me and there were a lot of rats and she and um, there was one the pan there was the, the camera panned and then a lot of rats had already died she had killed them so environment your environment makes you change your personality traits for good for bad that is a different topic altogether but you can change your personality traits by the way when i say for good for bad none of the personality traits is bad or none of the personality traits is great if you have a mix of all of these things it's fine but that doesn't mean if you are an introvert you will not succeed in your life okay or if you are an extrovert you will do wonders in your life at times if you talk much that also is not really good if you are too gregarious too happy go lucky too outgoing and you you depict the same behavior when you are in a official meeting in a professional meeting you might get uh, uh, you know kind of your, your boss might come and uh, come and tell you that is this the way you are you in uh, in your class are you are you a child so depending on the situation we we change our the way we behave but our core trait remains the same and there are these uh, since i have told you that lot of research takes place when it comes to personality these are some of the key research principles okay and it has been found that 
these are the identity development so personal personality development principle people develop a stronger identity as they age and maturity brings a greater commitment to and maintenance of this sense of self so as you grow you tend to have a stronger identity about yourself so this friends example that i gave he was an introvert and as he grew as he grew and as he moved in his life he understood the the real self that he he is or he should be okay and then a greater commitment towards your own self and maintenance of that sense of self because when you as you grow you the the identity that you have created for yourself the it becomes more stronger during the younger years when you are the age that you are in currently people are still exploring different roles and identities now take take some time and think will you will you actually think that when i'll grow up um, this is the kind of personality i should have you will when the stage comes you will automatically transform yourself so in the growing years you do not dwell so much on your identity you still you are at the exploration stage you still explore the different roles and identities you need to develop now can you think though it's very funny but can you think that how will you become a very good father can you even think or how will you become a very good mother that thought will not come to you but then how will you behave with your friends and all that is something that you are learning now the, the behavior that you need to form but then when we grow up we realize that okay so life stage plays a very important role in your personality when we grow up and when we become parents our focus is the child and then we only think about the child and how do we bring him up or bring her up you know by giving a very good environment so in the growing years you are still in the look of your identity the roles and responsibilities but when you have uh, when you are at a maturity level wherein you have already started working or you are you have started pursuing your uh, your professional career as in what kind of uh, you know topic uh, subjects you will choose will you choose science maths what you want to become this all comes only after for most of the students at the age of 6, 17 18 16 17 18 but uh, there are children who have already thought of that this is what i'll become maybe i'll become an is officer maybe i'll become a, a doctor or an engineer that is also true but in general when you uh, at a certain stage only you start identifying who you are who you want to be but when you are in the growing stage when you are young when you are in school all you want to do and you should do is just be yourself whatever your trait is just be yourself okay so you do not actually explore different roles and identities and that is what one of the key research principles is identity development principle we call it then maturity principle that was identity development principle and this is maturity principle identity development principle and maturity principle now what does maturity principle talk about people tend to become more agreeable emotionally stable and socially dominant as they grow older so again that is why we are teaching this to you we are training you on personality development the more you grow in your life grow as in with your age you tend to become more agreeable more uh, emotionally stable and socially dominant so you you understand okay i need to be social i need to be talking to people i need to agree to certain things i need to look at others opinions i need to become more emotional um, emotionally stable than you not know, thinking taking everything to heart all these things come with maturity with age so that is what maturity principle is plasticity principle what is plasticity principle while personality traits tend to be stable normally you have a stable personality trait here and there there are some changes that you make they are not set in stone it's not that it's crafted it's a stone you cannot recraft it they are subject to environmental influences at any stage of life now all this while i was telling that through maturity your traits change and when you the more you grow the more changes occur however plasticity principle kind of says a different thing it says that though inherently or by na- by nature you have some qualities it can change and what does it who influences that environmental factor and irrespective of the age and we will look into that when we discuss on the stages of life and um, personality types and all that so 
your personality trait can change at any age or any stage for that matter due to environmental factors okay it doesn't always depend on maturity and i have examples for that when we will do the stages of life then role continuity principle it is the consistency of roles that leads to continuity in personality traits rather than consistency in environment so it says that the, the the role that you have taken up okay i mean your personal identity kind of is consistent that leads to continuity in your there's a continuous uh, trait that you already have in yourself rather than consistently in environments okay so these are the these are from handbook of personality and key research principles uh, so in in a nutshell it's like your personality defines you but with age with maturity it can change some of the traits can change however or it's all it's not a rock solid kind of a personality that you have and not always with age your traits change sometimes there is an influence of environment also that makes you change your personality trait and i'll go back to the example of that movie that i was talking about when this lady in a short span of time she changed her her identity from a very meek shy docile um very cowardly kind of a girl to a to what she became okay so this is all about the personality traits the characteristics set of beliefs values our behavior that get formed and whether it can change or not in the other sections other lessons we will see other set of uh, personality types and this growing stage learning stage and all these stages it's also very interesting okay so i will see you on the other side thanks for watching and stick to the program thank you very much